In this lesson, we shall focus on course 1501, um, Introduction to Theoretical Computer Science. One, and uh, we begin by looking at question 4.2. Given the incomplete table below for the binary operation, and uh, we have looked at this uh, particular table before, and uh, we understood that B is the identity. Right, so if B is the identity, there are a couple of things that remain very important. So A stop B will be A, and that became C, because B is the identity, B stop B becomes exactly that, okay? And also, we're told that C star C is actually B. Okay, good. And so now we actually obviously look at the fact that C star B itself, B being the identity, uh, gives us C there. Okay, but also B star A would actually be A, and also B star C would be C. Why would B star C be C? It would be C because B is the identity. It does not change the A. It does not change the C. But also B being the identity, the identity combined with itself under the binary operation becomes the same uh, identity there. And so obviously we realized uh, that uh, this uh, would then be A there. And obviously looking at the symmetry B, A, um, and we have our C there, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Can, okay, yeah, well, I was just doing this table thing, um, um, completing the table there uh, like we did before. But can A star C in brackets star B and A star in brackets C star B be used in a counter example to prove that the operation is not associative? Motivate your answer. Let us check this first here. So we're gonna do A star C. In parenthesis, star B, we suppose that it is equal to A star C star B, right? What, according to this table, is A star C, right? So we're able to see that A star C, right? So if we are to look at exactly that, A star C gives us exactly uh, C, star b okay and this is uh, a times c star b would give us what would give us exactly uh a c right why would this be, be the case because b is the identity in the previous question we're told that c star b right so that c star b becomes uh, exactly what Right, C star B becomes C because B is the identity. Being the identity is like saying uh, three times uh, one, it will just be three. Why? Because uh, one is called the multiplicative. In this case, it is called the multiplicative, multiplicative identity. It is called the multiplicative identity. The B is the, is the identity so that Three times one becomes three. So C star B becomes uh, exactly C. Right. And if we look at exactly A star C, it would actually be C there, this way. Right. And so can these uh, be used uh, as a counterexample? Well, it is producing C equals C, which is true. It is producing the truth. And so the answer to this is no. It cannot be used, right? No, it cannot. It cannot be used. Why? It cannot be used uh, as a counter example. It cannot be used uh, as a counter, as a counter example. Why can it be used as a counter example? Right, cannot be used as a counter example because it is actually giving up uh, a true equation. But uh, if ever um, it would give or it would make the left uh, not to be not to be equal to the right, we could say that. So in this case, it cannot it cannot indeed be used there as a counter example. Um, yes, okay. please. Can can I ask a question? <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Yes, yes. Okay, why is um 
uh, C star A and A star C not the same thing? Why? What makes it different? That's the only thing that's confusing okay, okay. me. Yes, well done, is... well done, well done, because it is not commutative. Okay. Okay, so because it's not commutative, but how do I decide, like, which one would be C then? <laughs> okay, okay, I see, I see. Well done, well done, well done, well done. Ah, uh, because in the previous question, I I hear you there. In the previous question, we said uh, that the star is not commutative, right? But also we were told that it is a binary operation. So a yeah. binary operation means uh, it is a closed operation. What does it mean? It is a closed operation. It is an operation such that when you combine any pair of elements, uh, you get a result uh, that is in the set. Um, so the set uh, we are studying is a set uh, that has uh, this uh, particular elements A, B, and C, but it has uh, also the operation there. Meaning, okay, in each row, we must get all the elements here. Okay, we must okay. get all the elements there in the set because the set is closed. So it, it can't be an element that is outside the set. Um, so now, for instance, as you're saying, so because uh, we were given another hint in this case that uh, B is the identity element. B being the identity, meaning that if you combine, it's like a one, as I said, three times one gives us three. B is the identity, meaning that it vanishes when it's multiplied with another element. So because one vanishes when it's multiplied with uh, three, and uh, we get three. B being the identity, so A star B will just be A. Right. And so now when you get A star C, Right, so if you look at A star C, it would have to be another element there um, because we have already got the B and the A. Right, and in this case, it, it becomes uh, obviously exactly a C because you already have the B and the A. But also C star A would become what? Obviously because uh, you know that C star B would become what? Because B is the identity, it will therefore be, just become a, a C there. Okay, and also we note that uh, these uh, particular um, elements are such that um, there is symmetry in these uh, particular sets. I will speak about the table symmetry, right? And so now what you then have as well um, is that uh, B being the identity element, um, what it does, uh, it fixes uh, all other elements, meaning a B star C, for instance, uh, would uh, fix C. And so now we have uh, this particular order of the elements there. Meaning you can see the order, the C is uh, actually reflected as well there. And uh, now in every, because if this is a binary operation that is not commutative, we can therefore be in a position to see that C star A would have to potentially yield an element that is not amongst these here. Um, and so it will potentially be A. So A star C being C, because uh, there's no other C in this row, and also C star A uh, being A there. And so B star A would obviously be just A because B is the identity. Okay, so this should be sort of, but now if you look at the order of this here, across, uh, across uh, this uh, particular diagonal, you can see that uh, obviously A appears in the same position, B appears uh, in the in a similar position on either side, C also appears in a similar position on the on the other side. In the same way, we are able to see that uh, A appears uh, in a in a similar position, giving us a symmetry. So you have uh, B B B, and uh, here you have uh, C A A C, and uh, obviously you are able to see the that level of symmetry as well with the C, C there. And uh, obviously, now these are some of the properties. Uh, some of these binary operations uh, produce certain structures uh, and the structures have special names like, uh, um, like uh, the, what you call groups. Groups and uh, rings. Uh, rings and uh, some structures we call modules. Okay. So obviously, uh, the structure, each structure is its own given properties. Some are called monoid structures. However, obviously, in this case, uh, 
we actually were given this and the only there were two hints. That is, it's not commutative. But if it were commutative, it would mean that whenever we see A star C, the, uh, the result would be the same as C star A. But obviously here, it is not commutative, and therefore it has to be different. Okay, right. so if I understand, when it times is with B, it's like times in with one. So that's yes. why then it's not, the commutative thing doesn't really matter. But yes. when it comes to C times A, then it's commutative, so they switch around basically. Because yes. they can't be the same answer. And yes. then what I understand so far, so A, B, and C, because it's a closed operation, must be in the um, rows. In the rows. Or yes. each row. So, so it's but row, yes. not in the columns. It doesn't yes. matter in the columns. In the columns. Okay. It must be, yeah, it matters in the rows. Yes, it made us in the okay. rows. Well <laughs> done, well done. Yes. It, yes, well done. Thank you so much. It made us in the rows because uh, you're able to see uh, we follow the rows uh, there, most importantly. Okay, but thank you so much for noting that one. Okay, I'm sure we shall do a lot of examples on this. Thank you. Thank you again uh, there for noting that uh, problem there. Okay, the next uh, thing we shall discuss uh, is the notion of what we call the, um, um, you know, truth statements and false statements and tautologies um, and what you call mathematical, right? And there's something called mathematical logic or what you call propositional logic. Right, propositional logic. For each of the following statements, if you think the statement is true, circle true, else circle false, okay? Or F for false, okay? Right, so let us uh, look at these here. In here, we are looking at the, the Roman figure one in question 5.1 part A. And uh, now we are saying not P implies uh, Q is logical equivalent to not uh, Q implies P, right? So we're asking the question, is this true or false? So the couple of rules we need here, there's something that uh, the logical equivalence of these uh, relates to something we call the contrapositive, right? There's, there's a rule, okay, this one is a rule. Uh, what you call the contrapositive, or what you call contraposition, right? Contraposition. So now, in view of contraposition, you would say P implies uh, Q. This logical equivalent to not Q implies uh, not P, right? And this is uh, the contrapositive, and so we shall use uh, that rule here, which is uh, which produces. Um, the equivalence in this case, or what you call logical equivalence. So now we continue then to investigate this and see exactly what uh, we have. So let us check this question. So now we're going to take this one. So in this case, if we use a different color, suppose we use blue. So we have not P, the examiner changed from the P implies Q, a usual statement, to actually not Q implies uh, P. And so we must say not, we must say not. We must say not their uh, conclusion. So would say your not Q implies not P. And so now we would then say it implies not what is the premise. And uh, obviously viewing this as our premise, so it would be not P. And so this is the same as uh, not Q is logical equivalent to. So this is, uh, we say it is logically equivalent, right? Logically equivalent. So now uh, we have this, but not not P is just P. Aha, uh -huh. there it is. So this one is uh, the contrapositive or what you call the contraposition. Right, and uh, by dint of this, uh, we are able to see this as uh, as true. But it's not the only way to reason this out. Uh, there are a couple of ways uh, to reason this out. One of the methods we use uh, is the following here. We use to use their the disjunction. Right, we more we know that, so we can start uh, from the left. So now starting from the left. Or what to check? So to check, you can write uh, not P implies uh, Q. And uh, now it is uh, logical equivalent to 
not q implies uh, p and then now you take uh, the following the implication is changed to not uh, not uh, p or not uh, q and therefore it is not uh, not uh, q or uh, p because uh, p implies q is not uh, p o q so these are the same uh, uh, a logical equivalent, uh, right? So that uh, in this case, uh, we have not not P, which is just P implies uh, um, obviously not Q is logical equivalent to uh, Q uh, or uh, a P this way, right? So obviously I meant here, we need to have uh, not, uh, uh, not because it must be not the premise or the conclusion. So in this case, uh, you'd have uh, not the premise or the conclusion. So it's going to be exactly this. But uh, we understand and we most certainly agree, but vehemently, that uh, P or Q uh, is commutative, this property giving us uh, P or, uh, or Q. So indeed, uh, this is the truth. So we actually uncircle the correct one. And the correct one is uh, the truth symbol there. And we practice uh, with the next one. Right, the next one is the second Roman figure. And so now we want to investigate this one to check is it true or false. Once again, we're going to be cool. So this is uh, clearly the... We try to take a side and simplify and produce another side. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take uh, not... We're going to take P or... Right, P or not Q. Right, we're going to take a P or not Q. And R, right, we want to compare with P or not Q and R. So we manipulate these and see what we can get uh, with the manipulation. Okay, right, what uh, exactly do we get uh, with the manipulation here? So we can use something called the distributive law. Right, what you call the distributive law. What is the distributive law? The distributive law in any order says that uh, if you have a P and uh, Q uh, or R is logically equivalent to P and Q or P and R. Okay, right. So now we're going to use it. But this one is going to be distribution from the right hand side. This one is distribution from the from the left of the of, of this particular expression. So in this case, sir, it's going to become the following. It's going to be P and R or right, not Q and R like so. Right, and so we are able to exactly get this. And so now, if we check this very, very carefully, how is it therefore different from this here? Right, so we can write it as a P or not Q, and a P or R. Okay, we pause to check, are these equal to each other or not? Right, are they at all different or not? Right, by looking at this very carefully, um, we are able to see that whenever the end appears in the middle, there is or and there is end there. And uh, also we are able to see that uh, these are three symbols. And uh, we are able to see that uh, here there is a uh, uh, not Q and R. And uh, by dint of this observation, we are able to see the falsehood of this particular expression and the fact that we have used the distributive law and these are very, very different from each other. Right, and so, but there's more we're gonna obviously uh, do to explore these kinds of uh, relations. Right, but uh, this would be false there. Let's look at the third Roman figure. Let's look at the third Roman figure. This one here. Now, in the third Roman figure, not, not, P and uh, not R, considering the left-hand side of the equivalence relation. 
ਨਿਯੰਤ ਵੀ ਇਸ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟਲੀ ਸੇਮ ਐਸ ਨੋਟ ਆਰ ਓ ਨੋਟ ਪੀ ਕੇ ਨਾਓ ਲੈਟ ਅਸ ਰੀਸਨ ਥਿਸ ਟੂਗੇਦਰ ਐਂਡ ਸੀ ਵਾਟ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਹੀਅਰ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਵੁਡ ਬੀ ਦ ਸੇਮ ਐਰ ਸੋ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟਲੀ ਦ ਫਲੋਇੰਗ ਰਾਈਟ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਓਬਵੀਅਸਲੀ ਆਮ ਬੀ ਇਨ ਅ ਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨ ਟੂ ਐਕਸਪੈਂਡ ਥਿਸ ਓਕੇ ਲੈਟਸ ਲੁਕ ਐਟ ਦ ਲੈਫਟ so because we know by the lore uh the lore called de morgan's lore de morgan's lore right de morgan's lore so now we're going to write de morgan right we're going to write uh, de morgan's lore right so de morgan lore or what to call the the negation is called it the negation more precisely right so now we can say the negation of p and r is not p or not r okay not p or r is not p and not r right so now if these two laws uh, contain uh, the negation of uh, the uh, disjunction and the conjunction uh you would have the distribution here so this one is going to be not p okay the end changes to or and we have not not r okay and then we compare with this one r or not p right so now what is not not r not not r is just r so this one is not p but not not r is just r so we have r uh like this and uh, it is a uh, logical equivalent to not uh, r or not p not r or not p so that there in the end uh, we have this but these are exactly the same because what we have here is not p or r is logical equivalent to not and then this one is not p or r okay so these or the left and the right are exactly are, are pretty much exactly the same in particular they're exactly the same and therefore this is a true statement so which means therefore here we're going to encircle the true the truth value true right and so very very easy um um questions on statements and what to call propositional logic and we move to the next question I want us to look at the next question um on propositional logic and try to make sense of it. We move forward. Right, so now this one is way too easy and very interesting. We need to complete the truth table for the following compound statement. He need to complete the highlighted column last. So you're going to complete this one last because it has all the symbols we need but now let us look at this one here which is 1 2 3 3 right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 uh rows there not p would be oh okay p is uh, has 1 2 3 4 2 uh, uh symbols and 1 2 3 4 false symbols and we take the negation of this if you negate true you get a false 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 you negate false you get a true you get a true you get a true you get a true right so we negated everything in the column p and then here we focus on the column q and we negate that and if we negate this then we negate a uh, true we get false we negate false we get true we negate these we get false we negate false you get true you negate true you get false you negate uh, false you get true you negate true you get false you negate uh, false you get true okay so now we negate at every truth value uh they are every a uh, truth hood and false hood in the column for r you know this is what we got and then right now we come to the implication uh, row there and uh, we take note of the following here 
that if ever we look at P implies Q, it is the same as uh, not Q, not P or Q. Okay, I want to discuss this here. Very, very briefly, not P. Right, so I'm saying P implies Q. Because we're going to be using this a lot. Is the same as not P or Q. So now, you'd have exactly the following. You'd have exactly the following. So that then in the end, what do we have here? Okay, I want us to discuss this in detail. So, to spend, uh, to understand this very well, I want us to look at the uh, PQ, uh, true, true, false, false, and then true, false, true, false. Right, so that in the end, then you have not P, not P. Right, which is going to be false, false, true, true. Okay, that would be the not, uh, not P. Okay, there's something I'm trying to discuss here. Um, there's a point I'm driving towards with this little table. Because if you can understand the small one, then you can be able to do the big one. Right, so now we're going to do not P or Q. Right, so not P or Q, we're going to focus on the first, uh, not P or Q, these two here. Right, not P or Q. So now in mathematics, when you say, um, um, for instance, false or true, you get true. Right. And so false or false, you get false. True or true, you get true. False or true, you get true. I want us to look at this... Uh, um, and uh, ponder on this uh, very carefully. There's, there's more analysis uh, that you need to understand uh, here. So now we can, uh, uh, we're going to proceed with this. Right. So um, we proceed uh, as follows. And uh, now there's more we're going to discuss in this case. Right, 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 right. So now let us look at the following. So we are then saying here, this one is the same as P implies Q. So P implies Q is the same as true, false, is the same as this. So true, true. So we analyze together P and Q. This is uh, the true row. True, true, true. False. Okay. Right. So now, if uh, P and Q are both true, then this is true. But if uh, P is true and Q is false, if the conclusion is false, then indeed this is false. But also, if uh, the here you have uh, uh, a situation, so if this, if the premise is true, then this is false. But if it's if the premise is true and all the, and the conclusion is false, then this is false. Right, and so if uh, you have that the the premise is false, then uh, the conclusion in this case uh, becomes uh, true. Right, if the premise is false. Now, we, we, we are, we're analyzing this because if P is false, then it doesn't matter whether the, 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 the conclusion is true or false, the result will be true. So in other words, we're saying P implies Q becomes true whenever the premise is false. Right, but uh, now we are able to see, so that when we are sure of when a premise is false, uh, this is true. Okay, let us look at the following. So now we want to complete this with great ease and simplicity, 
Right, want to actually uh, complete this uh, with great simplicity. Let us look uh, at uh, the following uh, here. So what then we will do is to analyze uh, this table very, very carefully. And uh, see that whenever you have, uh, so we're gonna do this one last, but we're gonna actually say, not P implies uh, Q. So this is uh, not P and then uh, we have a uh, Q there. So we understand that whenever you have uh, the premise is false, it will always be true. And so now we are able to see that all these here are false, right? And therefore it means that uh, the this is gonna be, it doesn't matter about uh, Q. Whether it is true or false, then this is gonna be true. So we're gonna put true here, you're gonna put true there, you're gonna put true there, uh, you're gonna put uh, true there. Okay. Now, whenever this is true, if ever the premise is true, then you need to be careful because it can be either true or false. But now it depends on uh, this is true, but if the conclusion is false, then it becomes false, you need to check. Right, and so here they are both uh, true, so you're gonna have true. Okay, here they are both uh, true, you're gonna have true. Because if they're both true, then you have true. And then here we have the, here, the P and uh, the Q. The Q is false. Right, if the Q is false, then you have a false. So you have uh, this one here and this. So uh, the minute then you have uh, that uh, the Q is false, right, and therefore, uh, but there, if you have true false, uh, it becomes false, right? So, and then you also have the true uh, false, uh, it becomes uh, false. Now, okay, so we are starting this table, but very, very carefully. Let us reason this out. So, and make sure we understand what is happening because this is very, very important for us. So now um, we will proceed as follows, right? So um, we'll proceed as follows. We will proceed as follows. Right, we will proceed uh, as follows. Okay, right, I wanted us to uh, take a look at this and make sure we uh, obviously understand uh, this uh, very well. Right, make sure we understand uh, this uh, very, very well. Right, and make sure we understand uh, this uh, very well. Very well. Okay, there's something I want to I want us to analyze here and uh, and uh, be very very careful about, and make sure that uh, we understand uh, exactly what is happening. Right, and make sure we understand what exactly is happening there. What is happening there? Okay. Right. We are moving on. But now I'm actually trying to make sure that we are very, very careful in the way we analyze uh, uh, this uh, particular truth table. And uh, we to make sure, okay, pausing because there's more we're gonna do right now. So let's look at what we have got and uh, make sure we understand uh, every single bit of thing, every single bit of thing, okay. I want to reinforce the fact that whenever you have true, true, then you have true. Okay, you, I'll tell you why I'm emphasizing this. Whenever you have false, uh, true, right, false, true, you have true. Whenever you have true, false, you are false. Whenever you have true, true, you have true. Okay, now this is very important because you shall be doing even biconditional and other things. 
Okay, so take note of these because you're going to be using this little table to complete the big one. Right, and so now with this in mind, we actually note, therefore, that once again, whenever both of the, the, uh, the premises are false, then this is surely true. Uh, but uh, whenever the premise is, uh, uh, they are both true, it's true. And whenever the premise is uh, true and the conclusion is false, uh, it is false there. Okay, good. Right. Uh, so let's move on to this one. Now, we're going to take uh, the P implies Q or R, right? So we're going to have uh, this one here. And uh, make sure that uh, we understand uh, this very well. Okay. Right, we continue with our analysis of this. Let us make sure that we understand what is happening. Okay, pay, pay particular attention to the table because there's more we shall play around with it, but I want to make it much more understandable. And this is the wish. I want to make it more and more understandable. So um, it is something, therefore, that is uh, very important. We are seeking to make sure that it is very understandable. Very, very understandable. So let us pay attention to this. Right, so if we have uh, that, uh, this is the case, yeah? You have true false uh, because uh, we can, we have seen already that uh, true, true becomes true in the implication. True false uh, becomes false. False uh, true becomes true. False, false become false, right? So we actually obviously are satisfied uh, with that part. Now, I want us to look at um, this one here. So if we look at this, uh, what then are we able to uh, note? Um, we are gonna take uh, this one here. Uh, we're gonna take uh, this one there. We're gonna take uh, this one here. We're going to take uh, this one there. So that in the end, uh, whenever you say uh, this or this, so true or true, we can see the truth. Because uh, they are both true. Right. And so now we reason this out uh, together. We reason this out together. So now, if we then say, for example, True or false, right? We have true or false. True or false. So we'll get to that point. I'll get to that point. Right. I'll get to that point. There's more I want to say there. Um, right. Whenever you say true or false, we take the truth. Whenever you have a true or true, the truth. True or false, true. Right? So take note of that. Whenever you have true or true, yeah, true or true, true. So, uh, okay, I want us to mention the following to make sure that we're on the same page with this. Let us look at uh, the following table. I want us to draw a little table like this is the reason why I want, I want, to, I want to make sure that this is not confusing. Uh, all right, so you have a true, true. You have true, false, false, true, false, false. Okay. Okay, now I want us to look at, okay, we're gonna go back to the table, but this is a study I want us to make here. Okay, we can do P and Q. And then when I do P or Q. Uh, yeah, P or Q, both of them. Okay, there's something I want to clarify here so that we can make sure that we, we get everything right, that we understand well. 
Okay, so if you look at the end, true and true becomes uh, true, true and false uh, becomes a false. Okay, false and true becomes false, false, false becomes false. False and false becomes false. And then now when you do P uh, true or true, it becomes true. Okay, I want us to fix that. True or false becomes true. False or true becomes true. False or false becomes uh, false. Okay, I want to check that um, we have been very consistent in this little table here. That's what I want to verify. Because obviously we have two truth values, two true and then false, false. True, false, true, false. We negated the P and we have false, false, true, true. And then now we take uh, the not Q, not P or Q. Uh, true or true, we have the truth. And uh, now we come here, uh, right, false or false, we have false, true or true, we have true, false or true, right, and uh, obviously we have the uh, uh, true there, we have the uh, true there, okay, good, that is okay, just need to verify, I'm just verifying that everything is uh, most certainly in the right in the right order, in the right uh, order. Okay, just verifying that everything is in the right order, so that now when you have uh, this, you'd have a true, false, true, 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 false, true, true. Okay, so hundred percent. So the table is hundred percent. Okay, hundred percent correct. Just verifying there to make sure that we make no mistakes here. Okay, in the big table. Now, let us come to this one. So now I was saying we take this one, for example, using the same uh, rules there. So we have uh, this one here, which is true. Or, okay, because we take this one, or R, or R. R is this one. So if you then say true or false, we get a true. False or true. True. False or false, we get false, like that. Okay, so now we are done with this one and then we come to, uh, okay, with this one we're gonna do at the end. Hint, to complete the highlighted column last. Okay, this one, because there's a, a lot of things to do. Okay, now we're gonna do this one. Now we're gonna do um, uh, this particular column. So in this column, we're gonna take a not R implies Q. Not R implies Q. So you must remember that. So to make sure we don't get confused, I want us to mark this a little bit so that we don't forget and we possibly uh, you know, do uh, mistakes, et cetera. So we want to make sure we do correct things. Right, so not R, Q. These two, these two, Let's start the game. But to start the game, we know very well that with the implication, it's easy to start with uh, the false premise because the false premise will always be true. So in other words, false R. So you're gonna do a false R, false R, false R, false R. False R. There's, no, there's no reasoning there. So this one will just be true, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the, the 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 Q is, but as long as this one is false, whether this is true or false, it will just be true. So in other words, uh, if we do this, then we're gonna uh, do do this one. It's gonna be true, 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 true. So true, 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 true. Next. Now. Next, uh, also, we can have uh, the, uh, um, the, the truth. The truth uh, where we have both true, uh, both uh, truth values true, right? So you have true and the Q is true. So this one is going to be also true. I'm putting a star there. So let's put a true there. So we done with that one. This is true, but true, false. Is false. 
So we're going to do true, false. It's false. And then now, so we are done with that one. True, false is false. So this one is true, true with Q. It's it's a it's a true, true uh, yeah true true it's true yeah okay and then now we come to this one also the not uh, R implies uh, not uh, implies Q right so now we have the true false but we see true false becomes false so true false becomes false in other words the truth doesn't imply uh, does not imply falsehood. Okay, right, so we get to this. Now we are done with this particular column here, and let us look at this one. Okay, now we already have the not P implies Q, but it is to, such that it's not P implies Q and what? Or not, uh, right, OP, yeah, OP. So we have exactly that, OP, OP, OP. Okay, let us continue. So this one, not R implies Q, but we must uh, com combine that with OP. OP is this one here. So we're gonna just do this one with the first. So now we say true or true, true. Right, true or true, so this one, your true. Okay, there are three truths. And here this one is four true. So uh, uh, you have that. So now there's a false or true, true. Uh, okay, this one, true, true or false, true. Okay, let us continue. True or false, true, true. Or false, true. False, or false, false. Right, so we continue. We continue. We continue. We continue. If then you then say, now we come to the last one. So the last column is going to be this. But this one is going to be exactly the not P implies Q or R, which is this one. And uh, it, it implies uh, which one? It implies uh, this one here. Uh, the not R implies Q or P. So now we're going to focus on the following. I'm going to mark them green. I'm gonna put a star on this one. So we're gonna deal with uh, this one here. I'm gonna deal with this one. Okay, I'm gonna deal with this one, um, which is the not P implies Q or R, but also gonna deal with uh, this one, not R implies a Q or P. We have this. So now, Let's come to the, let's come to the, to this one. But which one do we start with? That's a thing. So we need to start with a P implies Q. We start with P, then Q, yeah? So we start with uh, which one? Okay, good. Because now we start with this one that is on the, on the left. Not P implies Q or R. It implies a not R implies Q or P. So it's these or this. So now you have true, true, right? Because now, okay, uh, this is easy. Because now if you have uh, that uh, this is uh, false, if uh, the premise is false, then you have uh, the truth. You have uh, the truth. So this is false here. You don't have a lot of the false here. So this would be true, yeah? And then now, we come to this one. Okay, but there are too many true, 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 true there. Okay, but they're also easy, this true, 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 because uh, if it's uh, true, true, then it's true. But if it's true, false, then it's false. Right, we start. So this is true, true, then it's true. True, true, then it's true. 
right? True, true, then it's true. 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 Aha, very wonderful. This is called a tautology. Tautology. Because it's true always. True always. So now we come to the, because we have seen that this is true, then we can answer the subsequent questions that follow as a consequence of uh, what is next. And uh, let us uh, reason uh, then uh, very, very carefully and make sure we understand uh, the next thing. Right. Is the expression a tautology a contradiction or neither? Like I said already, we can actually with so much confidence say it's a tautology. Right, so a tautology is a statement that is true, always. Right, and so it is true always. Otherwise, it is called a contradiction. If it's not a tautology, then it's a contradiction. Now, let us check uh, more problems and practice more. More problems and practice more. And more problems and practice more. Right. More problems and practice more. More problems and practice more. Okay, let's check. Okay, now in 5.2, we are doing more investigations, but also we are trying to understand uh, this module more and more. But we are spending time looking at uh, statements more. For all Z, right, for all X elements of Z, um, right, if we have the 2X plus 3 is greater than 0, or 3x minus 2 is less than 0. Is the given statement true? Justify your answer. Let us look at this and reason together. Is this a true or false? Right, so we reason this, uh, and the marks are only two, so we actually obviously are able to uh, look at that uh, very, very carefully. Let us reason together through this particular question. So we start for all. For all x element of z, okay, two x plus three is bigger than zero. Three x minus two is less than zero. Right, so we can reason this out. There are many ways to do it, of course. We start and say by saying that this statement is false. The statement is false if and only if two x plus three. Right is negative and and three x minus two is positive. Right, so the statement is a force if. X is, uh, if the 2x plus 3 is negative and 3x minus 2 is what? Is positive. Okay, this would mean that 2x is smaller than minus 3 and 3x is bigger than 2. X is less than minus 3 out of 2. And uh, X is bigger than two out of three. Okay, this is the case uh, since C 
since x cannot cannot be less than since x cannot be less than minus 3 over 2 and uh, greater than greater than 2 out of 3 Right, so we are then saying this statement is true if and only if this, because if ever x, let's look at the number line here, negative 3 out of 2, first we put the negative numbers and we put the positive numbers on the right. We are looking at the case that uh, x is less than minus uh, 3 over 2. There is a variable x that is smaller than uh, uh, 3, uh, negative 3 over 2. Yet, uh, the same variable is uh, bigger than uh, two-thirds. And so we argue, therefore, that uh, this statement here, obviously, is false if and only if this is the case. Because uh, if you then take this and that, they cannot be both true. They cannot be both true. Because they disagree, this one goes to the left, x is negative here. And here, x is positive. x is positive. x is negative and x is positive. Since x cannot be less than minus 3 over 2. Since x cannot be less than minus uh, 3 over 2 and greater than two thirds. So x cannot be um, negative and be positive at the same time. So this therefore obviously means that these two, these two statements cannot be uh, uh, true simultaneously. Because of that, we'll then uh, be in a position to then say uh, this statement is false if uh, that is the case. It is false if that is the case. So now, obviously, uh, you need to reason that out and, and, and uh, process this um, and, uh, and check if it is uh, obviously true or not. So you'd say, we then actually say that um, the statement, the statement, the statement is true. We we'll therefore see that the statement is what? The statement is true. Because we have already said the statement is false if we change the greater than to a less than. And if we alter these symbols here, we alter them, this one to less than and this one to greater than, and it produced the statements that were opposites uh, because we saw an X that is negative and then uh, positive. At this uh, simultaneously, and, and this is uh, false. So x cannot be less than minus three over two and greater than two thirds simultaneously. It can't be simultaneously true. And uh, and and what we then we're able to observe is that uh, the statement given with uh, the greater than first and the less than second, um, obviously with an or is true. What is this? I want us to spend uh, a minute or so discussing the significance of what we've done, because what we've done is consistent with the negation of this. So if you take the negation of this, let's take the negation of this, yeah? Let's take the negation, step by step. Let's take the negation. So we negate 2x plus 3. We negate 2x plus 3 bigger than 0 or 3x minus 2 less than 0. We negate. Okay, we, this is the given one. We negate it. So if you take the negation, let us uh, discuss uh, the negation of this statement to get the, uh, the truth of this. So the negation is going to be 2x uh, plus 3 negative. And so you reverse this, it becomes the opposite of this. And obviously it would be 
this is greater, then you take uh, the opposite of that, uh, which is uh, potentially less. And uh, obviously, you can take uh, that. And also, you take uh, 3x uh, minus 2 is bigger than 0. Yeah? So, and obviously, we, we took the negation and found that uh, the negation itself is false. If we negated something, we negated x, and we got false, it means that the statement is true, because it is only true that whose negation is what? Is false. Well, we took the negation of this and found that the negation is, uh, is, uh, is, is, is false, and therefore it means that uh, we took the negation of a statement that was true to get false. Okay, we must thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it was awesome having this discussion. It's just 10 o'clock. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank good. You. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll, we shall save the recording. We'll keep in touch then for the next session. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, goodbye and God bless. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Goodbye.